windshield wiper problem. In this know-how program, we'll examine the windshield wiper systems. I have frozen this technician for the moment. Frozen, see? Later in the program, I'll unfreeze him so that he could perform wiper system tests. By way of background, uh, all wiper systems include a wiper motor, wiper switch, and a washer pump. Electrical diagnosis of wiper systems centers on these components. There are two different types of wiper systems, pulse delay and conventional. A conventional system includes a five position wiper switch, a washer pump mounted on the solvent container, and a wiper motor. The conventional wiper motor is very similar to the pulse motor. The conventional wiper motor cover has a printed circuit that establishes system operation. Pulse wiper systems include a few additional components that affect diagnosis. The pulse wiper motor uses a cover that is different from a conventional cover and includes a solid state circuit board and a pulse timing cam. The pulse timing cam opens a contact on the circuit board. A drive pin attached to the wiper motor shaft operates the pulse timing cam as the motor operates. The pulse delay wiper switch has more positions than the conventional switch. The delay position adjusts the time interval between wiper strokes. The conventional wiper switch has five positions. Mist, off, low, high, and wash. In off, the wipers return to the park position and the motor stops. In mist, the wipers make one full stroke, then park. In both the low position and high position, the wipers run continuously using slightly different current paths. In wash, the washer runs as long as the washer switch is held on. The wipers run at low speed during wash. When the wash switch is released, the wipers cycle a few times and shut off. Well, that takes care of the conventional wiper switch. Pulse wiper switches include all conventional switch functions along with a position that adjusts the time interval between wiper strokes. This adjustable wipe interval is achieved through a delay rheostat in the wiper switch. Placing the switch in the pulse delay position establishes a current path through the delay rheostat to the circuit board in the wiper motor cover. In the maximum delay position, the rheostat provides maximum circuit resistance. The interval between wiper sweeps depends upon resistance through the delay rheostat. Connecting a digital volt ohm meter across the delay rheostat results in a reading of about 1.2 mega ohms in the maximum delay position and about 24,000 ohms resistance in the minimum delay position. However, the wiper switch does not accomplish pulse delay by itself. The solid state circuitry in the pulse wiper cover actually handles delay timing functions. This board incorporates logic circuits, which establish all timing and washer commands based on signals from the wiper switch. The cover, circuit board, and motor components work together to produce all operating modes. The circuit board supplies power to the wiper motor through the park switch. Several components contribute to stopping the wiper motor in the depressed park position. Both conventional and pulse wiper systems have a park switch under the motor cover that stops the motor in the depressed park position. The park switch contains a flexible set of contacts that are opened and closed by the latch arm. The drive pole, which engages the latch arm on the park switch and the lock pole. 
the drive pawl opens and closes the park switch. The large gear has a recessed area called the gear pocket. The continuous groove in the large gear is much closer to the gear teeth on the side opposite the gear pocket. This feature, combined with the off-center drive shaft, allows the large gear to act as a cam, moving the drive pawl into and out of the park switch. When the pawls are locked in the gear pocket, the motor continues to operate. In this position, the drive pawl does not contact the park switch. When the wiper switch is shut off, the park switch relay coil circuit opens, allowing the spring-loaded latch arm to move into the path of the gear drive pawl. The park switch contacts remain closed and continue supplying power to the wiper motor. Continued rotation of the wiper gear mechanism engages the drive pawl to the latch arm. Cam action resulting from gear rotation moves the drive pawl into the park switch slot. As the drive pawl moves into the slot, it pushes the latch arm against the flexible contacts in the park switch. This action mechanically opens the park switch contacts, cutting voltage to the wiper motor. Troubleshooters have a very useful way of thinking about wiper system diagnosis. They concentrate on what wiper systems have in common. In a sense, all wiper tests fit into a few general categories, including performing a system check to confirm inoperative functions, DBOM measurements of voltage, current, and resistance, using a fuse jumper to isolate and test components, and mechanical inspections to locate physically damaged parts. The troubleshooter's key to wiper diagnosis consists of understanding what the various tests check for and knowing the order in which the tests are performed. The symptom diagnosis chart shows that depending on the symptom, wiper tests are performed in different orders. The symptom diagnosis chart also shows that not all wiper tests are performed all of the time. The main point here is that the results of the system check drive the entire diagnosis process. For example, the first line shows that wiper system power and ground are only checked at the wiper motor when the wipers are totally inoperative. This line shows that a current draw test is only performed when wiper operation is slow or intermittent. When the thinking behind the chart is understood, all that's needed is some familiarity with the test. It isn't necessary to memorize wire colors and circuit numbers. That's the purpose of the service manual. However, it is necessary to know what tests relate to each symptom, and then why, before making measurements. Well, I think our buddy has been frozen long enough to have muscle cramps. Maybe I better unfreeze him so we can watch him perform the tests. Okay. Go ahead and start with the wiper system voltage check. First, he checks for wiper switch voltage through the wiper fuse. In this case, the presence of voltage between the fuse and switch indicates that the fuse is good and power is present at the wiper switch. At this point, Checking the wiper system ground quickly pinpoints potential problems to either a wiper component or the wiring harness. Next, he'll check the ground in an inoperative wiper system. First, he measures voltage at the battery terminals to get a baseline battery voltage reading. Then he unplugs the connector from the wiper motor. With his DVOM probes connected to the battery positive terminal, and the wiper system ground through the harness, his DVOM should read battery voltage. If the DVOM reading is less than battery voltage, there is high resistance somewhere in the ground side of the wiper circuit. High resistance is often the result of loose, dirty, or corroded connections. The technician uses a different method to check ground if the wiper system is working but runs slowly. In such cases, he checks the wiper ground using a voltage drop test. 
Voltage drop tests are based on the idea that a voltmeter connected across an operating circuit should read less than half a volt. The DVOM reads less than half a volt because the properly operating circuit consumed or dropped most of the circuit voltage. Readings higher than half a volt typically indicate resistance somewhere in the circuit. The technician will next test the wiper washer switch and harness. He will perform this test in two stages. In the first stage, he'll check wiper switch voltage in all modes. In the second stage, he'll check switch resistance, continuity to ground, and washer motor operations. First, he unplugs the connectors from the wiper motor and wiper motor cover. On this vehicle, the connector C1 is the large connector that attaches to the wiper cover. Then he attaches the DVOM test leads between the connector and ground. He turns the ignition switch to run and cycles the wiper switch through all the positions. By observing the meter readings and comparing them to the switch position test chart, he tests everything between the wiper fuse and motor connector. He continues the test by connecting the DVOM to the pins coming from the wiper switch and comparing the test results to the chart. If a measurement is incorrect, he checks the wiring leading to the switch. If the harness is okay, the wiper switch should be replaced. Well, that takes care of stage one of the wiper switch and harness tests. In stage two of the test, the technician will check switch resistance continuity to ground, and washer motor operation. Before starting, he makes sure to switch off the ignition before he measures resistance. He measures the resistance of the wire that runs between the large and small wiper motor connectors. The DVOM should indicate less than one ohm. He checks the wiring harness if he obtains a higher reading. If the wire is okay, he measures between the ground pin of the small connector and the wiper system ground on the fender apron. A good wire has less than one ohm of resistance. Higher readings indicate trouble in the ground wiring. Next, with the wiper switch in wash or high, he measures switch resistance at the large wiper motor connector. Resistance should be less than one ohm in high and wash and open in the other switch positions. Incorrect readings here indicate that there's trouble in the wiring harness or wiper switch. Next, the technician will jumper test the washer pump. When he jumpers battery voltage and ground into the large wiper motor connector, the washer pump should run. If the washer motor runs with the jumpers connected, the wiring and the washer pump are okay. Well, that takes care of stage two, where the technician tested the wiper switch, harness, and washer pump. The next diagnostic test will be the wiper motor current draw test. The technician only performs the current draw test when the wipers operate slowly or intermittently. With the ignition switch off, he removes the wiper fuse. Then he connects an ammeter across the wiper fuse terminals at the fuse block. Our technician is using high current shunt J34898 with his DVOM to measure current. With the ignition switch in run and the wiper switch in low, he measures current draw with the wipers running on dry glass. If the lowest current draw exceeds 6.5 amps, it indicates that the trouble is in the wiper blades, wiper transmission, or wiper motor. That takes care of the current draw test. The next test will be the wiper motor test. This test will use six separate stages to narrow down wiper motor problems to either the wiper motor, the motor cover, or the park switch. First, he jumpers ground to the small wiper motor connector. 
Then he applies battery voltage to one of the wiper motor terminals. The wiper motor should run at low speed. When he attaches the fuse jumper to the other wiper motor terminal, the motor operates at high speed. If the motor does not operate when directly supplied with power and ground, the technician replaces the wiper motor. Next, the technician will perform the test stages related to cover and park switch testing. First, he jumpers the wiper motor connectors together, and then he grounds a small connector. Then he applies battery voltage to the wiper cover connector. The wiper motor runs at low speed. If it does not, he checks the park switch and cover. To check the park switch, he disconnects one of the leads coming from the fused jumper. The motor runs at low speed, then parks. Oh. If the motor does not park properly, he replaces the park switch. Next, the technician will check the wiper motor cover. Okay. With the small connector still grounded, he applies battery voltage to the wiper motor cover at three of the terminals controlled by the wiper switch. If the cover is good, the DVOM detects battery voltage. Oh. If a lower reading was obtained, he replaces the cover. The last stage of the wiper motor test will involve using a jumper with a 500,000 ohm resistor. This 500K resistor replaces the delay rheostat in the wiper switch, checking the delay function at the circuit board. Okay. He connects a 500K resistor to the circuit board to take the place of the delay rheostat. When he jumpers voltage to the circuit board, the motor makes single sweeps about eight seconds apart. The motor crank arm stops at the rest position. The motor does not park. If the test results are improper, he replaces the wiper motor cover. The service manual and ESM contain additional information pertaining to wiper systems. The know-how reference manual describes the tests we've just seen. We have seen how an experienced technician covers some of the hows and whys of wiper testing. As we've seen, there's no secret to wiper system diagnosis. This insight allows a technician to make a clean sweep on wiper system repair orders.